Howdy. I really like this setup that I'm using. It's gonna be one of my favorite things of all time, I can already tell. I'm about to take my dog outside. Some other dogs came over, marked their territory in our front yard. He's gonna go and return fire. You know how the business goes. Today I wanna to talk about a question that I frequently get whenever it comes to people buying cameras, looking for cameras. The question of if I am going to spend uh, a nice chunk of cash on which camera system to get, should I in the year 2024, going into 2025, should I look for a high megapixel camera with some beginner lenses and things like that, or just adapting old vintage lenses onto a high megapixel camera? Or should I get myself a nice, maybe an older uh, flagship camera, something around 26, 24 megapixels with really, really sharp glass? What's gonna be better for my images? What's gonna be better for me? And everything in between. My answer is probably gonna surprise a lot of people as far as my reasoning for either side, but more importantly, what I think is better. But I do want to hear what you guys have to say. Since I'm in my flop era, I can do stuff like this. And uh, yeah, let's go for it. Hopefully the wind isn't too dramatic of an issue right now. It randomly, of course, picks up whenever I start recording. But to start off with, let's talk about the pros of a high megapixel camera. Now, I'm the kind of person that always says, well, you don't necessarily need a high megapixel camera. I think for a lot of people who are just shooting, you know, street photography, just candids, shooting stuff with family, uh, taking these photos, that high megapixel cameras can pose a lot of issues more than they can resolutions. A lot of times 24 megapixels, 18 megapixels is gonna get the job done. You don't crop or need to crop as much as I think a lot of people think, especially if you're shooting wide angle. For most people, if they wanna crop, they'll eventually end up getting a tighter telephoto focal length. If there's someone who shoots 24, cause I can crop to 35, you're eventually gonna make your way to 35. But the benefit of those high megapixel cameras are, especially especially for people that wanna get into portraiture. The more detail, being able to um, edit people, make faces look better, et cetera, product photography, um, things for e-commerce, of course, landscapes, and just people that are looking to, I don't wanna say make larger prints because 24 megapixel camera, 26 megapixel cameras, no matter the sensor size, can get you uh, anything around a 30 by 20 at 300 DPI and then above from there, 240, 200 DPI is gonna be more than enough when you get into larger um, images. But the benefit definitely has to be just that extra information to be able to make edits and change things, to be able to um, clear up skin, to be able to remove obstructions and landscapes and things like that. It, it, there is a benefit. There is a benefit to having more information, but the benefit isn't always, um, you know, 100% of benefit. Again, storage costs, uh, they're cheaper, but if you're someone who uses small hard drives or just your internal hard drive, larger megapixel cameras are gonna eat that up. And also the price tag that comes with them is a little bit heftier and you may not need to pay that price because cropping and the resolution, you may not see that big of a jump for it. I think of Fujifilm with their 26 megapixel sensors and now they have 40 megapixel sensors. The jump of 14 megapixels from 26 to 40 isn't as huge as I think people want to, want to think and a lot of people, when they got their cameras, they were severely disappointed. Um, and so this is just one of the things you have to think about. Yes, higher megapixels sounds great, and in theory, it is really, really nice, but there is kind of a diminishing return whenever it comes to user by user case. But then again, high megapixel cameras, like I said, they can be very useful, but it just comes to that dollar amount situation. A camera running 40 megapixels, 50 megapixels, 60 megapixels, 70 megapixels, GFX camera where you have, um, you know, larger sensors with these 50 and 100 megapixels, that can eventually become a little bit more costly, especially buying into a specific system. And whenever it comes to more bang for your buck, I don't always associate a high megapixel camera with that, unless it's in the GFX system and you're adapting lenses. But there's also the issue of if you can't get a sharp enough lens to resolve these sensors, what the hell is the point? Now, speaking more on ticket about everything, it's the resolution issue. If you're buying a high megapixel camera, but you can't afford a lens that you're able to uh, pair up with it that resolves that sensor, your return isn't gonna be as great. My shorty got me these, my first pair of clogs. I really like them. Really, really like them. If you aren't going to spend the money on glass that resolves those cameras, it's a waste of money and you're just being dumb. I'm being honest, if you have a high megapixel Sony camera and you're not pairing with it high megapixel um, you know, glass from Sony, like G Master lenses, 
you're just making a dumb investment. If you're buying Fujifilm's new X-H2 line, the X-T5 line, the ones that have 40 megapixel sensors inside of them, but you're pairing with it the 18F2 or the 35 1.4, yes, it will make that lens perform better, but it's a dumb investment if the whole point is purchasing it because you want more detail, more resolution, more information. You'd have been better off buying a 26 megapixel counterpart like the X-H2S. This is one of the reasons why I don't recommend high resolution cameras, because most people, number one, they don't need a high resolution camera. They want a high resolution camera because they think, okay, now I can print big. You don't need a high resolution 40 megapixel camera to print big, we've already talked about that. You don't need a high resolution camera to be able to get into portraits, to be able to get into sports, to be able to get into all these things. You just need a camera that works and you need to be decent. More importantly, you need good glass. And if you can't pair the two up together, that's where you're losing out. But I say all that to say this, if you're someone who strictly taking photos, has the opportunity to get certain high resolution cameras and you can pair it up with a good lens, you know, because of a sale or even, in my opinion, a smart move of getting either contact Zeiss um, lenses from CY mount or adapting these newer third party manual focus lenses to that camera, I think it's a good start. I think why not? When it comes to camera bodies, specifically the GFX line that can get you medium format, more information, better image, you can't combat it, full frame can't touch it. You get 50 megapixels or 100 megapixels, like a GFX 50R or a GFX 100S, that to me is a great investment if you compare good third-party lenses that are made for the system from Irix, um, things from uh, Astahori, a TT Artisan, or adapting contacts, Yashica lenses, CY mount lenses, I don't see why not. Those lenses will resolve uh, close enough to the full resolution of that GFX sensor, and more importantly, a lot of them, especially over 40 millimeters, will cover the full width of the sensor. Just something to think about. Yes, I don't think high megapixel cameras are that great and everyone needs them, but there are some benefits and they are cheap enough now, like with GFX, to where you can get a good ass camera, a better sensor than anything full frame, and you can get some affordable lenses. That to me is a good package and it'll save you money over a Canon and a Sony counterpart. And now we're going to talk about better lenses, sharper lenses, sharp sensor over resolution. But this did happen. I have to buy a new windshield now. A symbol of Texas excellence. Hey, better those barn grill. This is called Wassel. It's very famous here in Central Texas, I think. It's like, I don't know, cider, spiked cider kind of shit. I had to uh, come into work, got called in, so here I am. Okay, so we've talked about the plus side, downside of high megapixel cameras, or more importantly, where the mistakes are made when you're making these purchases. And remember, we're discussing this on if you're on a budget and you're looking to see what to spend next on. High megapixel cameras paired with entry-level lenses, or more importantly, older, really nice lenses that can't resolve the full resolution of that sensor, just not a good matchup. But one thing you can do, which I recommend to about 90% of people, is if you're just patient and get yourself a 24, 26 megapixel camera, maybe an earlier model flagship from a couple generations before, especially if you're into photography, and pair that with a really, really good lens, you're you're, you're just gonna have such a great time. The reason why I bring that up is because if you're patient enough to buy a lower megapixel camera right now and pair it with some really nice glass, some Zeiss glass, some G Master glass, some Red Badge Fujifilm glass, some L mount Canon glass, even adapting L mount EF glass, uh, because I believe that a lot of their L mount lenses, second and third version, were built to be able to resolve the full resolution of their 5DSR and 5DR cameras, which are 50 and 60 megapixels, um, really, really good deal. By the way, you can get those for about $400, $500, best deal in photography. They're able to resolve that. If you can be patient and pair that body that you may not want because it doesn't have all the megapixels with a really, really badass lens, it'll only be great whenever you do buy that high megapixel camera and you have lenses that pair with a high megapixel body so you can actually get that full resolution. Pixel peeping now has caused our mind to kind of get warped about, oh, you know, what is good and what isn't good because we look at a 24 megapixel uh, image 
that is coming from, our, you know, we're importing into our computer and we blow that up and we can't crop or zoom in as much as we can on a 60 megapixel sensor. And so we just assume that no matter what lens is in front of that 60 megapixel sensor, 60 megapixels is better because I can zoom in with more detail at 500, 600%. But whenever it transfers to actually printed paper, you'll realize that the good lens with that high megapixel body is what you actually need to make that high megapixel body shine. And until then, a standard 24, 26, 30 megapixel sensor, I can't believe I'm saying 30 megapixel and 24 megapixels is, is low resolution now, but those sensors with a really, really good like G Master lens or Red Badge Fuji lens, those are the ones that are going to shine. Those images are gonna be your favorite from all time. And that's why you have a lot of people that get nostalgic about these older, cameras with these smaller sensors. Again, I still can't believe that 24 megapixels now is a small resolution sensor, but as someone who's printed their work for standees, for large banners and all, everything in between that's been on billboards, digital and print billboards, it's, it's all just the same in the game. And honestly, it just comes down to, for the most part, how damn good is your glass? That's where you should be spending the time and spending the money on. So I hope that made sense and I hope that helped you guys with buying decisions, especially future ones, because I truly, truly do believe that you're better off stacking up fantastic lenses before you ever have to make a high resolution camera decision. I've done it before where I have purchased lenses that did not resolve the full resolution of a high megapixel camera. And I saw myself not liking that camera, uh, you know, whenever it was compared to older, smaller sensors um, that I had had, and especially with those lenses. And it always comes back to, I liked the glass more than I liked the sensor on that small camera um, compared to, you know, me not liking the glass made me hate the sensor on that larger resolution camera. I hope that made sense as well. Go potty. Go. Taking the boy out back to use the restroom and that's about it. So all that being said, I hope you guys understood where I'm coming from. Hope this is helpful in the slightest way. Remember to take it light, but take it. Have a good one. Good job, buddy.